Now this might seem like the second or third most unnecessary comparison in the history of technology. Like if you were to compare, say, a telegraph machine with email, it's not quite the same thing. I mean, we're kind of comparing apples to oranges in this case, but we're more so comparing like grapefruits to persimmons. They're two different tastes for two different occasions, but they're both fruits, if that makes any sense. Anyways, here's a backstory. This is my first Sony. It's actually my second Sony, but between you and me, it's my first one since it's the only one I still have. And I've been using this as my primary music source for when I ride my bike for the past 10 years at least. And it's lasted this long. I found this at a rummage sale in a whole bag of stuff for $1. So it's probably the best bang for your buck ever. Now, I've had to do some modifications to repair it. First of all, I added a headphone jack because it didn't come with one. Second of all, the original volume dial broke off, so I wired a new one right up top. But other than that, it's been pretty solid. I'm not gonna lie. So we'll just get into the comparison right off the bat and then I'll ramble on about why cassettes are so awesome at the end. So, what's so great about the cassette player? It has real buttons and real knobs. There's nothing easier than just hitting play and having it play. And you can actually see which button is which on the Bluetooth speaker. Look at that. You can hardly tell them apart. And like, it's instant. You press play and it plays. This, you gotta turn it on. You gotta hold it for five seconds. You gotta get your Bluetooth device. You gotta sync that. You have to wait for it to sync. You have to open up VLC Media Player. And then. But, anyways, that aside, analog wins in that aspect. Second of all, this thing, as I mentioned, is quite repairable. You can open it up with screws on the back panel, get inside of it, and mess with the circuitry to your heart's desire. This, on the other hand, has no visible means of opening it, which might mean it's not even serviceable. It's one of those new electronics where it's permanently sealed, which might be waterproof, actually. What I'm getting at is this thing lasted me 10 plus years. We'll come back in 10 years and see how this is doing. All right, next is you can put any C batteries in here. I invested in some rechargeable ones years ago, which were well worth it. Whereas this one, the battery is built in. And as I just mentioned, you can't service it yourself. The next thing the Sony's got going for it is the cool factor, which a lot of people are impressed with when they see me rolling up with this on it for obvious reasons. It stands out quite a bit. It's, it's really awesome. I'm not going to lie. I love it. It can play cassettes, which is a nice feature if your music is primarily on cassettes already. I've been recording my own personal, like, seasonal mixtapes every like four times a year just music that I'm feeling at the time putting like random funny skits in between the songs so recording cassettes has been like a deeply personal experience with music and I feel like you don't get that as much digitally or maybe I'm just being sentimental but yes you can't play cassettes on this unless you convert them all to digital like I'm currently in the process of doing behind this curtain yeah. Another thing is you don't need a Bluetooth device to use this. You just need your tapes. And that it's also cheaper. This costs less than a dollar. This goes for like a hundred and something. But I found this on the side of the street incidentally, which actually prompted me to consider, reconsider why I'm using this in the first place. Because I actually just barely found out what Bluetooth was. <laughs> Which, by the way, if you lost a Bluetooth speaker at the corner of 
you're not getting it back, sorry. Anyways, what does the Bluetooth speaker got going for it? Well, better sound quality. It's louder, which is surprising because it's smaller. This thing, I'm definitely not using it for its intended purpose. This is for like kids to plug the microphone in and like annoy their parents with. I've been using it as a boom box. This thing has like a one and a half watt speaker in it, which is just barely loud enough to drown out mild traffic noise. <laughs> It starts clipping like right as it's getting loud. So this thing you can really, you can annoy the neighbors with this. And it has a lot more bass. Like new speakers, I'm not gonna lie, have like unbelievable amounts of bass for how small they are. I'm impressed. Like as much as an apologist I am for old technology, like you gotta admit when they did something right. The other advantage of the Bluetooth speaker is it looks like squashy grapefruit. It's the squashy speaker. <laughs> I don't know if that's an advantage to anyone else, but who cares? Thirdly, or whatever number we're on, it has no moving parts. So in theory, this will last longer than this, right? No, the benefit of that is the music doesn't cut out when you go over bumps in the street, which incidentally has only recently started happening with this thing because I found out the Batteries were wearing down the plastic at the bottom of the compartment, causing them to be loose. So I added some tape to secure them in better, and I think it's working. Oh yeah, I also had to uh, put some Velcro on the battery strap, because that thing was stopped clipping in years ago. Nextly, it doesn't get cell phone tower interference, which is a strange phenomenon I've noticed with the cassette player is certain cell phone towers will cause a distortion in the speaker. Considering cassettes were invented before cell phones even existed, maybe they weren't factoring that in? The next point is it doesn't take forever to rewind stuff with the digital music. You just hit one button and it's easy to search stuff. You don't have to wait for it, obviously. And going back to the mechanical movement thing, part of the reason I'm trying to switch over to the Bluetooth speaker is because I think the tracking on the cassette player is starting to go bad, which means that the tape is no longer being held in a straight line it kind of goes off and like starts crumpling up and makes a huge mess and sounds bad but only on certain tapes so far it probably has to do with the roller wheel being so worn down when they're new and good they're supposed to have a convex curve to them like on a belt sander or a bandsaw which keeps the blade like riding in center like I know it seems like backwards from what you would expect. Like say this is the roller wheel. You would think it's gonna fall off, but no, the friction actually keeps it in the middle versus if you had like a convex shaped one, it will wanna go like that because the friction is pushing it to the edges versus keeping it in the middle. It's kind of crazy. And I think that's about it. So will it survive 10 years? We'll find out. Now let's get into cassettes and why they're so awesome. So here's my cassette collection, or at least the important part of it, which is all the seasonal tapes. I have them subdivided by season. Here are the spring tapes, 2022 dating back to 2011 or so. Here are the winter tapes, same dating. And then summer, and then autumn. And then miscellaneous up here. Over here are the the first cassettes I ever recorded in in seventh grade. I just named them one through six. 
is when I learned how to use the boombox and record stuff off the radio, which was amazing at the time because iPods were already coming out, but I'm like, dude, I can record stuff off the radio. You can't do that with an iPod. So, I don't know, cassettes is just so cool. Like, you can record stuff, you can record over stuff, you can, like, decorate the boxes. Like, I always, I've been, like, putting artwork on them based on, like, stuff that's happening in my life at the time. Like, here's the one where I built my loft bed and when I won $500 from that karaoke contest. And then I made this one, like, based on the secret tape from Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. And then I was fasting at the time, so I drew Sanic, and he's holding a big bag of grapefruit and oranges. That was based on a bike ride I did where I hauled this massive amount of fruit over the mountains. And then strawberries and springtime was in full effect with the poppies. Yeah, let me show you what I mean by skits. This one was during... 2020 during March when the bullcrap media scare was in full effect there's a I was watching a lot of Star Trek there's Captain Picard and then Maurice White from Earth Wind and Fire and then I drew the Metrolink F125 because there's a song on here like you gotta have faith and 125 is the decimal of one eighth so F125 is faith <laughs> And then I'm grateful for my ex was the uh, Ariana Grande song, except I changed it into the ancient staff from RuneScape in a waffle iron. Because I was eating lots of waffles at the time and watching spiritual stuff on YouTube. So I'm like, dude, I'm the golden age waffle sage. It's my code name. Anyways, where's that skit? This skit pretty much typifies my point of view at the time. It's a combination of three different audio sources. Let me hook the mic up to it. Maribel, do me a favor. You have a chance to talk to your city right now over the airwaves. And, you know, Gardena is a city that you love. You know, you, it's dear to your heart. What do you want to tell the people, uh, you know, from the city of Gardena about staying inside? Please stay home. It, it's not for you to be out jogging at the park. No! No! You don't need to give in to the impulses that hurt your future. God can help you learn to say a small no today that sets you up for a greater yes in the future. Can I so if you say a big no, you get an even bigger yes, right? Yes. Say no to propaganda. I'm in frame. I'm in frame. So there you have it. That's my comparison between Bluetooth and cassettes. I'm probably still going to record cassettes just because they're so cool and I like them, but this might become my new primary bicycle music source. You know, for so many reasons. Obvious reasons. Like, why did I not notice this 10 years ago? Well, I didn't have a free Bluetooth speaker from the side of the street 10 years ago. Alright, DJ Pete Sick, signing off.